Good morning. As we gather here this morning, it is Palm Sunday, so if you're here in person, you know, we can wave our palms. If you're at home watching live stream, you know, grab some cream paper or something, find something to wave as palms as we celebrate our Savior's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And as we celebrate Palm Sunday, that means we are beginning Holy Week. And with Holy Week, we have additional services this week. We have our Monday, Thursday, Good Friday services. Both of those services are available for in-person worship as well as on live stream. They're both at 7 p.m. If you sign up, that gives us just a little heads up. We can kind of plan the seating if you're going to be here in person. And, of course, live stream, just hop on and join us for our 7 p.m. worship experience. Also, we have our Easter Sunday. A week from today, it's Easter Sunday. We celebrate the resurrection of our Savior Jesus on April 4th. We have two services available for in-person worship at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. The 10.30 a.m. will be our live stream service as well. We ask also that you would sign up for those services if you can in advance. That gives us just better planning of seating people and planning for communion. But we also have in our electronic newsletter, a Dale's cell number. You can call him if you're making a last-minute change of plans and you want to show up here for Easter Sunday or the Holy Week services. Also, too, on Easter Sunday, because it is a communion Sunday and a big celebration for us as a community, we're going to extend that communion celebration, that service, into the afternoon with our drive through communion from 12 noon to 2 p.m. So if you're joining us on live stream and would like to commune as part of your Easter celebration, drive through anytime between noon and 2 p.m. on Sunday, a week from today. All right, now it's time for us to greet one another in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For those of you here in person, get up, say hello. For those joining us on live stream, shout out and say hi. Hi. We pray. Precious Jesus, we come before you today shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna in the highest. We wave palms as we recognize you as our King of Kings. We pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to guide us to recognize your kingship in our everyday lives. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son Jesus to take away our sins, to give us a free spirit to worship you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of them standing there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Good morning again as we gather here for worship this morning. It's Palm Sunday. As we gather for Palm Sunday, we're going to wrap up our Lenten series titled Wandering in the Wilderness. Wandering in the Wilderness, especially over these past 12 months, new daily realities have been part of most of our lives of simplicity, of sacrifice, and sorrow. And in this series, Wandering in the Wilderness, we've been exploring characters in the Bible and their encounters with God in the wilderness, sometimes the physical, real wilderness, and other times a more metaphorical wilderness. But those times of wandering and encountering God and, and the changes that occur in their lives as they encounter God in their own brokenness and sin, as they encounter God in His grace, His love, and His mercy. Well, let's kind of get our wheels greased here a little bit, kind of question for you here this morning. Here's a question. No, that's really a question. It's an opportunity for you just to share and give some thought back. Give a one-word explanation of how you felt when what you experienced was different than your expectations. I'll say that again. Give a one-word explanation of how you felt when what you experienced was different than your expectations. I, how many of you have ever had something, you know, different than your expectations? We, we probably have all had that before. I can give you some examples. You know, an example where sometimes what I expected was not what, you know, I experienced. At the drive-thru. Have you ever been through the drive-thru? You, know, you order your food and you're excited because you're going to get a bunch of healthy, not really, uh, greasy, slimy hamburgers and fries. You know, tastes so good, not good for you. And you go and you're driving home. Maybe you're like me. You put your hand in there eating some fries. You're going down the road. And you get home and you open up the bags. And guess what? It's not your food or, or what you ordered is not inside. And you've got to figure it out like, you know, one, did somebody not get their order? Do we have to share something? Or you pull out and say, I didn't want a fish sandwich. I wanted a greasy hamburger. And I got a fish sandwich. Do I really want the fish sandwich? Do I go back and tell them you didn't get my order right? You know, all those things. You just, this is what I expected, and this is what I'm experiencing. But there's been other times of the drive through you know, again, eating those French fries, driving back home, going to feed a happy family. And you get there, and you open up the bag, and what's inside is not what you expected, much to your joy, because, you know, there's an extra hamburger in there. Can't let that go to waste. I'm going to eat it. You know, there are those moments where what we expected is not what we experienced, and sometimes it's joyful, it's great, it is a surprise, and we're excited about it. And other times it's frustrating, it's disheartening, you know, it it's just does not meet the expectations that we had. And sometimes life, life is like that. Not just driving, you know, going through the drive through but life can give us those experiences that don't match up with our expectations. And we see that here, you know, as we've been working through this series, wandering in the wilderness, that sometimes what God's people expected was not what they experienced. So we talk about wilderness, let's again run through that definition of a wilderness. A wilderness is a wild, uncultivated region like a forest or a desert, uninhabited or inhabited by wild animals. You know, again, whether that's a physical wilderness or a metaphorical wilderness that God's people are experiencing. And here's where we're going to land today. This is that one truth, that Jesus leads us through the wilderness. Jesus leads us through the wilderness. Well, today is Palm Sunday. It's a big 
festive celebration as we remember what's called Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. You know, so what is this? You know, this is a celebration. It's a time of a kind of a party. It's excitement, you know. If you're here in worship, you hear the palms. You can wave the palms at home. Uh, you'll make something up. Wave your hands. Get excited, you know, because Jesus is coming. He's entering Jerusalem. He's riding on a donkey. We're going to pick up here at Mark 11, verse 8. Let's read this together. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had caught from the fields. So, you know, their, their cloaks, why, why put their cloaks on the ground? You know, I don't know if you've ever done that before. Have you ever, you know, gotten off your coat or something like that and put that on the ground as somebody was, you know, walking before you? Well, in this culture, it emphasized their recognition of who Jesus is. It emphasized their recognition of their loyalty to him as the king. It, it was their recognition and support of him as their king. It's kind of like rolling out the red carpet for Jesus as king. And then the palms, you know, as we wave the palms, and, you know, today our palms are a little different than we've had before. Maybe not quite, you know, what you expected, what you're experiencing as you're waving the palms. Or if you're at home, you're like, I really wish I was there so I could wave those palm branches. You're not quite what we are expecting and what we're truly experiencing. But in the Greco-Roman world, this ancient world, palms were a sign of triumph and, and victory. Triumph and victory, because this is the king who is coming. He is triumph, he is victorious, and we are excited to welcome him. Let's pick up now verse 9. Let's read together. And those who went before him, those who had followed, were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David, Hosanna in the highest. The word Hosanna is a Hebrew word. It's a Hebrew word that means save us, and especially it was words spoken to a king. And as they speak these words, these ancient words, they're really reaching back to an ancient promise from God that the kingdom of David, not just David, you know, but his kingdom, that lineage would bring a new king that would save God's they had expectations of this king. Expectations of one who would lead them out of their troubled and oppressed times. These were people that were troubled and oppressed by the Roman occupation. These were people who were looking for a, a new exodus. If you know, you know from the Old Testament, the story of Moses, as God uses Moses to lead the people away from Egypt, out of slavery to Egypt, towards the promised land. And they were hoping now for a new exodus, getting rid of the Roman occupiers, that foreign government, that pagan government, and being free to be God's people. They were in an extended wilderness time. A time where they felt oppressed, a time where they felt uncertain of God's presence with them, a time where they were in hope, waiting for God to save them. But what we see, because you know what unfolds here, is that as they were shouting out, you know, Hosanna, I don't, have you ever been part of a big crowd of people that shout out? And I mean, how many of you have ever been to a Husker game? You know, or even if you're at home watching the game, you know, with family and friends, we shout out, we're excited. And sometimes what we expect, you know, what we hope for is not what we experience. I, there's always next year, right? That's what we always say. There's always next year. But here in, in the wilderness experiences of life, here for God's people of this moment as Jesus is entering Jerusalem, of all the ancient moments and the people that we have explored in Scripture during this series, and even for our own lives, in the wilderness we may cry out, God, save us. And often what we say is save us on our own terms. Save us the way that we want to be saved. Save us, you know, and, and, and get us out of this wilderness. But again, here's the point we land on. Jesus leads us through the wilderness. Jesus leads us through the wilderness. God, as we see in the experience throughout Scripture in our lives, that God is one who leads us through the wilderness. Jesus doesn't promise to change the wilderness. He promises 
to lead us through the wilderness. And we see this especially as Jesus, he knows He knows, even though those gathered around that are shouting out Hosanna and waving their palm branches, the expectations they have is not what they're going to experience. Jesus knows what he's about to experience. He knows that within, you know, the end of that week, he will be betrayed, he'll be arrested, he'll be beaten and scourged and mocked as a king. And then he'll be nailed to the cross. He'll gasp for each breath of air. And then he'll breathe his last breath, having bled and died for you, for me, for the world. For all those wilderness moments of our lives. And for this wilderness moment that we live in since the fall of humanity. That he will live and die for us. And rise again. That we have life in him. That we know that he will lead us through the wilderness. Because he is our living Savior. He is one that has defeated the greatest wilderness that we live in, in the sin, death, and the devil. Jesus doesn't promise to change the wilderness. But he promises to lead us through the wilderness. He promises to lead us through this wilderness time that we've been in this past 12 months in the midst of a pandemic that is beginning to come near to an end. He leads us through those wilderness moments we have relationally with others. The moments that we have in our health, in our finances. Those wilderness moments we have in our struggles with sin and the uncertainties of life. Jesus doesn't promise to change that. But he does promise to lead us through the wilderness. And he's leading us through the wilderness right now. Our living Savior who promises that he will never leave us and never forsake us. As we wrap up this series, Wandering the Wilderness, as we celebrate Palm Sunday and as we move into Holy Week, there's a challenge I'm going to pit before you this week. And the challenge is this, that during Holy Week, that during Holy Week that you'd read one of the passion narratives from the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, or read more than one of them, read several of them, all four of them. They're all a little bit different parts of that passion. Or watch, you know, one of the movies, The Passion of the Christ, And read through that and and see the wilderness experience that Jesus went through in the last week of his life. But know that as he goes through that experience, he goes through that experience for you and for me. He goes through that wilderness experience because of his love for you and for me, for the world. He goes through that experience so that he can go through that experience with us. So that we know that whatever wilderness experience that we face, we are not alone. That our Savior, who has defeated sin, death, and the devil, our champion, our victorious king, that he is with us, and he'll lead us through the wilderness with him. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of this day. We give you thanks and praise as we celebrate this Palm Sunday, Lord. Still another year where many of us are at home watching live. A few of us gathered here, Lord, we celebrate. We celebrate your triumphal entry. We celebrate what it means that you went through your own wilderness so that, Lord, we don't go through our wilderness alone. That you, our living Savior, you lead us. You are with us. We thank you for your presence, for your love, and your mercy. We pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. This time we profess our faith in these ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We confess our sins together. Most merciful God, Jesus Christ was tempted in every way, yet was without sin. We come before you and confess we have sinned. We have hungered after that which does not satisfy. We have comprised with evil. 
we have doubted your power to protect us. Forgive our lack of faith and have mercy on our weakness. Restore us in the love and trust to walk in your ways and delight in doing your will. Hear God's promise. Because of his great compassion, God blots out the stain of our sins. He washes us clean from our guilt. Hear his promise of unfailing love and mercy. All of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. This time we return a portion of the gifts and resources that our God has given to us. This again is a response to a God who leads us in the world. It's the God who gave his life for us in his son, Jesus Christ. And as we gather these gifts, these resources, we use that to bless a community in which we live, to share his love in the community. We also use those resources so that we can build one another up in our faith. And those gifts you can do through the P.O. Box. You can mail that to our P.O. Box. You can text give at 84321 or use the QR code here or go online to holysevier.org. And one of the resources that we have for our faith, we use this both for our Sunday school and our confirmation as well as some of our small groups. It's also a available for all of our families at Holy Savior is the Right Now Media. And here's more about that resource. Right Now Media. It's for groups. It's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically based videos. Get equipped, get inspired. Please join me in prayer. Jesus, we ask that you be with all those that are on our prayer list wrapping your arms around them and bringing them comfort and healing. We lift up in prayer all those that our government, our nation, grant this with them wisdom and knowledge to deal with all the problems and challenges that face us, especially our southern border. Please be with Chelsea and the missionaries that are bringing the good news to the world. Be with us as we recognize that our mission field is under our feet. Father, send your Holy Spirit to give us the words we need to bring others to you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his face upon you and grant you peace.
Holy Savior, my name is Silas. Before we wrap up, we need your help to stay connected in such a disconnected time. Please go to holysavior.org and fill out the connection card. This greatly helps us communicate, connect, and care for the Holy Savior family. Thanks, stay safe, and God bless. Goodbye. Hey, it's been a great joy to worship with you to celebrate the Palm Sunday, the triumphant entry of our Savior Jesus Christ. Again, that challenge to take up during the, this holy week is to read the Passion Narrative, one of the Gospels. Start with the Palm Sunday reading and just read all the way through up to the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. Take the whole week to read that. Read a different Gospel every day. Enjoy that. Enjoy the beautiful day God has given us God's blessings. Have a great day.